Hey, what's going on everyone? Tom here from Integrity. In this video, we're going to have a look at Adobe Max. You know that conference that's going to be happening in a few days. This year is special because it's going to be completely free and it's online only so you can create your own schedule. Now, the problem is there's 350 different sessions across three days, you know, so that's impossible to watch all of them, obviously. I created a list for different target groups. So first one was After Effects. There's another video for that. This video is for editors. So we're going to have a look at some premiere sessions. And the last one will be about social media and how you can use After Effects, premiere and that sort of stuff for creating really engaging content. So stay with me and we're going to have a look at some premiere sessions. So Adobe Max is going to be happening on Tuesday, 20th of October till 22nd. So that's three days packed with events, you know, with sessions. So that's a lot to choose from. You can create your own schedule by going to this website, which is the official website for Adobe Max. You just need to sign in or, you know, register if you don't have Adobe account. All right, so click here on open catalog or view your schedule if you already scheduled something. Let's just click there. Right, cool. So this is the main uh, dashboard. Uh, you can see speakers here. Your schedule is over there. If you click on there, uh, we'll show you a full calendar and stuff like that. Uh, speakers, if you have someone particular in mind, you can search for them and for their sessions. And that's also really useful. Right, so as you can see, each of these classes uh, or sessions, they have uh, kind of ID in front of them. Um, so I picked a few of those that might be relevant to you. L6621A, which is Adobe Premiere Pro Basics Part 1. Start, import and organize. Now, what interests me about this is the organizing part. You know, how really professional post-production um, editors organize their footage and their bins and stuff like that. So that really interests me. Richard Harrington is going to be presenting this class and he is promising that he's going to show us how to set up a project, importing and organizing video assets, very cool, and some essential editing techniques. So I think this session might be really good for someone who is new to Premiere. You know, maybe you are switching from something like Final Cut or Resolve and you just want to learn some basics, you know, so it's really cool. Now, this session is going to be happening from 6.30 till 7, so it's only 30 minutes long, um, but if you look closely, this is part one, so that suggests there's also part two as well, at least. Uh, you'll find it by changing this last letter from A to B. And I'll just show you this part two where, um, again, it's presented by Richard Harrington, uh, and, but he's going to be talking about colors, clips and graphics. Now you can add it to schedule by clicking on this button like that. Um, because I have something else scheduled on that same time, which is this one, Adobe XD, I really want to see that one. Unfortunately, I can't watch the other one because they overlap. So just keep that in mind because that will happen. As, as I said, there's 350 sessions across three days. That means uh, you need to, you know, set your priorities which one you want to watch because there will be some overlaps. Right. So the next one is L6626A. And if you are wondering, um, all of these links to these sessions will be also in the description below. Now, this is editing faster and smarter in Premiere Pro. Again, part one, that suggests this is a series. Now, this one is presented by Luisa Winters, which is Adobe Master Video Trainer, which is pretty cool. And she's going to be talking about essential keyboard shortcuts for the drag and drop editor, best keyboard shortcuts for timeline editing. So I think this session is going to be really focused towards more intermediate people, people who already got some experience with After Effects because um, it says here this is a part of training trilogy. So probably there are going to be three parts um, of this session, which means one and a half, maybe even two hours of um, content. Now let's have a look uh, on the second one. So that was part one. This is part two. What we're going to learn here, quick color correction solutions, matching shots. That's really cool. I like that. Uh, using master clips to speed up your color correction workflow. Uh, that one is also really good. So I think this is when you have something uh, like an image or a still from video, whatever, you can match that. Uh, okay. And then C is 
part three, which is going to be talking about identifying and fixing audio problems, uh, really important, and keyframing and automated audio mixing. So part one and part two are talking more about, um, you know, video kind of side of things. And part three is going to be talking more about audio issues and how to fix them. All right, another session that I picked is L6628A like this and this is the color lab stop guessing start grading in adobe premiere pro again this is part one so keep an eye on part two and part three maybe we're going to be talking about this one jeff greenberg is a post-production specialist um, so i trust him to teach me how to do proper color grading so jeff is going to be talking about using an intuitive approach to color which is cool working with luma and chroma and starting with scopes, your superpower. This is really interesting because, you know, if you have one of those monitors that might not be properly calibrated, you know, you think that something looks really nice and uh, properly graded according to your own eye and your own monitor. Um, but then you realize when you open those scopes, you realize like, you know, your skin tones are completely off. I used to have that problem before I learned how to use scopes. Definitely a good class uh, to learn proper grading in Premiere because, I mean, Lumetri panel is super powerful. And if you combine that with Lumetri scopes, I mean, there's like nothing you cannot do. All right, let's have a look at B, which is part two of the same session. In this one, Jeff will explore scopes redux. I have no idea what that is. So let me just add it to my schedule. Now, again, I have a session conflict, so I'm not gonna add this one because I'm gonna make a note that I'm gonna switch in between two uh, sessions because I really want to learn what Scopes Redux is and also key layouts and customizations. Uh, it could be really cool because I have this dual monitor setup I'm yet to take advantage of. And then layering Lumetri filters. That's some advanced stuff. Cool, so that's that. Let's have a look if there is C as well. There is, there is C. So in this one, Jeff will explore color matching and beyond. Really cool. Correcting skies, faces. I think faces, that one is really important because that uh, skin tones are quite difficult to grade unless you are going for that scientific approach, you know, when you have like that uh, scope of color and you just try to, you know, match those uh, scopes. So it's definitely something you should learn. Um, working with LUTs in Premiere, Photoshop and After Effects. That's one of those things, by the way, with these LUTs. Um, it's just, just so many people selling different LUTs. You know, LUTs are these things that you can load into uh, your Lumetri panel and they will give you a certain look based on, you know, several filters and settings and stuff like that. Um, I've tested uh, a lot of them and most of them are literally just settings saved in, in Premiere because a lot of time you can do the same thing, if not better, uh, by just learning these techniques and do it yourself, you know. So I think this is a really good session for everyone who wants to step up their game in grading and, you know, learn from professionals how they grade their footage. Uh, it's really important, even when you're making videos like this one, for example, um, you know, knowing these techniques will help you save time, which is always nice. So yeah, keep an eye on this one. Okay, so on the next one is completely different. So this is S6611. Improving video production with filters and transitions. Again, this is an intermediate class, so I guess you need to have some knowledge of Premiere. Uh, modifying transitions, filters and effects. Sounds easy. Copying and pasting attributes in Premiere when you move in the time head uh, and it keeps selecting different things. Uh, sometimes you'll find yourself pasting effects on different footage files because, you know, it auto selects that for you. Maybe there's some trick that I don't know about. Uh, changing effects over time, keyframing, uh, creating and saving effects presets. Looking at it, I mean, it says intermediate, but I would say all of this or most of this is kind of basic. So even if you are new to Premiere, I think this one is going to be really good for you because again, keyframing in Premiere, horrible as it is, uh, you need to know how to do it. I mean, it is nowhere near to what you can do in After Effects, but you still need to know how to do keyframes in Premiere as well. Now, copying and pasting, obviously, modifying transitions, filters, and effects. I just wonder, these transitions and filters, what are they gonna be? Um, are they gonna be coming from different plugins, or is it gonna be the ones that are default in 
Premiere because now you have different packages that support transitions in Premiere, you know, these really nice transitions, not just the basic. So I wonder what uh, Valentina V is going to be talking about, but I think this one is going to be good uh, for beginners. I wouldn't say this is inter intermediate class, but who knows, who knows? But I don't think it's going to be intermediate because again, it's only half an hour. It's quite a few topics and most of those look like they should be and it probably will be for beginners. Right, so the next one is S6615 and this is tips for a smoother Adobe Premiere Pro workflow. Again, this is intermediate. Um, I always like these tips, you know, because uh, there's always something you can learn about Adobe apps. Um, so never underestimate <laughs> uh, any advice you get from someone who is editor, director and producer, you know, Christine Steele. Watch this one if you want to improve efficiency while previewing and importing footage. Yes, I do. Better manage repetitive tasks. I think that's really important as well. Um, really cool. I, I wonder if they're going to use um, some kind of script thing there as well. Something like Apple script. I think that was that one was really cool with uh, combining that with Premiere. Uh, work faster and have more fun in the timeline. Cool. Yeah, uh, that's not very descriptive. I don't know what that means, but work faster always is good, right? Create better flow throughout the editing process. Again, same thing. No idea what that means, but it's a better flow. So I guess I can always improve. Um, yeah, really cool. So I recommend this class. It looks like this one is actually slightly more intermediate than the previous one, the one with keyframes and that. But again, I think this one is really cool. So yeah, definitely put this one into your schedule if you want to learn, you know, so how to work faster in Premiere. Who doesn't want that, right? Everyone wants to know how to work faster and then sleep more. Okay, and the final one that I picked is actually completely different. It's L7011A and this one is intermediate to advanced and this is mastering collaborative video editing with Creative Cloud part one. And I think there is two or three sessions like this. Basically, what they're going to be talking about is building your own team project and invite colleagues to collaborate. This is one of those things that I haven't tested yet at all. So I don't know how it works, but it's something that I'm really keen to learn because the way we work is that I record these videos and I give it to Jack and Jack will edit them and create a concise video and then we you know put that on YouTube or whatever but it would be really nice if I can help Jack for example and then Jack can help me when I need to you know uh, edit certain things within my own videos that would be really cool and if that could happen both at the same time working on one project that would be really cool I've tested this with Adobe XD two people working at the same time and that worked quite well you know you can see whatever the other person is doing in real time which is really cool create a creative cloud files folder and invite colleagues yeah that seems to be easy build a Creative Cloud library, yeah, again, basic. Uh, manage the shared scratch disk of your Creative Cloud libraries. This one could be good. Um, no idea how that works. Let's just have a look at B, which is going to be part two. We're going to be talking about the team projects notification system in Premiere Pro. That's pretty cool. So you always know what's happening within the project. Why and how to manage conflicts. You know, conflicts is one of those things that you're definitely going to run into purely because if someone, you know, does something and then their connection drops for a second and the other person is trying to sync something, there, there are definitely going to be conflicts. Um, so it's good to know how to manage those. Uh, how to automate the ingest and creation of shared proxies to collaborate. This is really interesting. How to automate that? Understanding team projects, media management. Yeah, that could be really good uh, because usually when you're editing these Premiere files, Premiere projects, the project itself is not that huge. I mean, the actual Premiere profile, but everything else that goes into that file is massive. You know, your footage files and uh, graphics and whatever else you have there. So this could be really cool. Exporting with team projects. Yeah, should be good. <laughs> Let's have a look if there is C as well. So that should be part three. Yes, there is. And this one is going to be talking about review team projects fundamentals, experimenting with After Effects functionality as part of a team project. OK, experimenting with After Effects functionality as part of a team project. I wonder what that is. Create and manage LinkedIn projects to add deeper control to editing collaboration. 
yeah, um, okay. I guess if you have many, many of those, uh, it might be quite difficult, you know, to making sure that you can manage all of that and people who are working on that and several people have different permissions. So yeah, I think this is also really interesting. And I picked a couple of bonus ones as well. This one is S6912. Proven feature film workflow techniques for video creators. This is for general audience. I think this one is gonna be really cool. Tips for organizing footage, always amazing. By the way, this is from Vashi Nedomansky. Also, I noticed this thing here. If you schedule this session, you will be entered into a raffle for one Precision 5750 mobile workstation. Value 7,000. This powerful workstation features an Intel Xeon 6 core processor. You must add the session to your schedule to be eligible. So yeah, so definitely schedule this session. So, cause uh, who doesn't want to win 7K computer? And on top of that, all of these things are really cool. Tips for organizing footage, editing techniques to tell the story, the importance of audio. This is more like, uh, towards the general side so, of the topic, but I think still this is going to be really cool because uh, Vashi is also going to be talking about using VFX, um, something that is close to my heart. So that was one of those bonus sessions that I picked. Another one is L6625A. This is After Effects title design for Adobe Premiere Pro users. Now, why did I pick this? Purely because I think if you are a Premiere user, sometimes you might find it um, really overwhelming, you know, when you need to jump to the After Effects and just get to some, you know, title design animation done there and then bring it back to Premiere. So I think this is gonna uh, be really good for those people who might be struggling with this a little bit. So Nick Harrows is gonna be presenting this class, gonna explain After Effects interface, setting up title design to use an edit in Premiere Pro. Again, this is gonna be probably, very likely, gonna be done through essential graphics, meaning that you just parent several properties in After Effects and bring those properties into Premiere Panel. It's really simple, I mean, nothing to worry about and it actually works quite well. Working with Adobe fonts and Adobe color themes, that's also important. Adobe fonts, um, that that is really cool. Um, people usually use uh, either this, it used to be known as Typekit, um, or a Google Fonts, but this is better because you can actually find all these missing fonts in your projects and just download them from Adobe Fonts for you automatically so you don't have to do anything else. Let's have a look at the final one, and this is really the final one, S6610, and this is multi-camera editing workflow. It's easier than you think. And I completely agree with this because we used to have multi-camera setup in our old studio. We don't have that anymore, but it is really simple to set up. You can actually record two, I don't know what the limit is, but definitely more than two uh, different streams and then use your keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, uh, to switch between those cameras as you're editing. Valentina V, again, is gonna be talking about multi-camera best practices, including shooting video via Premiere Rush. You know, Premiere Rush is the mobile version of Premiere, works on iOS and probably Android as well. Understanding the Create Multi-Camera Source Sequence dialog box. It's not that difficult. If you are recording from multiple cameras, uh, they need to be synchronized in terms of the time code. So Premiere can do it based on audio or uh, time code coming from your cameras. Uh, it's really cool, uh, but you just need to know what you're doing when the sequence dialog box is opened. Uh, live switching a multi-camera sequence. Yeah, that's uh, with the keyboard shortcuts. It's really cool. Refining a multi-camera edit. Um, that could be interesting. Best strategies for color matching different camera angles. This is also very important if you have multiple cameras because it's very likely you're going to have different lenses on those cameras or, you know, di different positions, different lighting slightly. So it's important that you color match those two or multiple cameras together so it looks concise and nice. Right, so that's about it for this video. If you liked it, give me a like. Uh, let me know in the comments below as well. There are also two other videos that I did for Adobe Max. One was talking about After Effects. This one was talking about Premiere. And the next one is gonna talk about social media and how you can use Premiere and After Effects to create really engaging content for social media. So definitely stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.